happy Thursday. I hope you all are having a wonderful week. Um, let's see. It's been a while. Last week, last Thursday, um, I was trying to do Facebook Live from the car on the way home from the horse show. It wasn't working very well. My husband likes to drive really fast. So I was trying to do the Facebook Live because I hate to miss you guys, but it was really hard to like focus on the camera and try to talk to you guys. So I apologize about my not very good Facebook Live last week, but I'm going to make it up to you guys this week. We have a lot of really hopefully interesting things to talk about. I have some questions that I'm going to answer. I have some things I wanted to talk about. Um, of course, first the show. So last weekend was the CDS championships. I only took Natasha because since my horses went to Chicago, I didn't want to make them like go right away to another horse show. And Natasha was good. Um, she won the freestyle the first night and then she was third the second night. And I was really proud of her. Natasha's freestyle is really fun. And Natasha is such a special horse because she's small. She's only like 15, three. And so when I'm leading her around, people always are like, oh, she's so tiny. She looks like she looks like a pony. But when she passages, she grows like two hands and she's such a special horse. She tries so hard for me. And in the freestyle, I do two tempies on a half circle directly into the one tempi. So it's a pretty complicated pattern that we do. And um, she just tried her little heart out for me. It was really hot. So when it's hot, she's black and she doesn't do well in the heat. So I have to be really careful to give her a lot of walk breaks. Like I'm really careful to warm her up a little and then give her a walk break and then warm her up a little, particularly when it's hot. And then the other thing that we do for her when it's hot is we get a bucket with ice water and alcohol and then rub her down with that and sweat scrape her right before we go in the ring. So that's just a little trick if you have a horse that gets overheated that can really help for the show ring. Luckily, we were showing in the Equidome. So that's the indoor arena at the equestrian center. So that also helped um, a little bit to cool her off. So Okay, I see Joellen is here in the chat. So if you guys have any questions and you're here live, ask them in the chat. Joellen is there to help you and I'm gonna be answering other questions. Oh, but Diana, I see your question. Hi, Diana and Debbie. So Di Natasha is an Oldenburg and she's actually by Negro. So Natasha is a half sister to Vallegro, which is kind of cool. She's Negro and Donner Hall. So she's bred really, really well. I keep trying to convince her owner, Karen, that at some point, maybe we should try to get some embryos from her and have little baby Natasha's because she's, she's really special. And that I should also give a shout out to Karen Drown. She is Natasha's owner. And she is so supportive of Natasha and of me. And it's really special to have an owner like that, where she basically is like, treat her like she's your horse. You make the decisions. Um, I fully trust you with your training and your decisions. And that's really, really special. And so thank you, Karen, for that. The other thing that's so cool about Natasha is she like, I can get on her and do the Grand Prix. And then Karen can get on her and her owner and she totally like mellows out and takes care of Karen. And that is really, really special. Okay, so one thing that I wanted to talk about tonight is the importance of the basics. The reason that I wanted to talk about this is because this is something that I've been really working on with my personal horses. I competed my three horses. So one of my goals, I have my goals written up there on the wall. Let me know if you're here live, if you've achieved your goals if you're still working on them, how your goals are doing. Because remember how we did a goal setting webinar on January 1st? We're going to do another goal setting webinar on New Year's Day this year. That's the New Year's Day ritual here at Amelia Newcomb Dressage. So my goals 
for my three horses was that I wanted to qualify all three of them for nationals in Chicago at their respective divisions, which I did. And we trained a lot. We did a lot of shows. That was wonderful. But in order to get better, you have to go back to the basics. So since Chicago, I've been really going back with my horses and focusing on the basics. What are the basics? Your position. Your position is a huge part of the basics and improving. If you go online and you watch any top rider, Catherine Dufour, um, Charlotte Dujardin, I was watching a video of Sabine Shoot Carey ride recently. Their rider position is flawless. Their seat is connected to their horse. Their hands stay out in front of them. They sit straight and symmetrical and even. So that's one thing that I've been going back for myself and focusing on is my position. Riding with more subtle aids, making sure that my seat is more connected to the horse, making sure that my hands are independent and that I'm doing smaller and more subtle aids. So that's always, always whenever you're not sure what to work on, focus on your position. Another really great exercise to help with your position is um, taking your stirrups away from yourself and riding without stirrups. That really helps to get your seat connected. Another thing is exercising and working out and taking care of your fitness. For those of you guys in the 30 Days to Round Challenge, next week is fitness week, and that is really, really important. What else about basics? So basics also is the base of the training scale. So rhythm, suppleness, and connection. Suppleness has to do with mental and physical relaxation of your horse. So making sure that mentally your horse is relaxed. Um, one thing that I've been doing with my horses is really being mindful that I'm not overworking them, that I'm varying my workout schedules, especially with Harvey. He's a Grand Prix horse, and so I'm trying to be very mindful that he needs to get out, he needs to move every day, he needs to walk as much as possible. You need to do a lot of walk with your horse. That's a very important gait for them. And when horses are in the wild, I forget this statistic, but they walk something like 15 miles per day on their own. And so it's really important that you spend a good, you know, 15 minutes at the beginning walking your horse. At the end, you cannot do too much walk with your horses. And with Harvey, he usually gets ridden in the morning. I always make sure to walk him for 20 minutes before I start my workout. Then after I ride him, he goes in the pasture for, I would say, an hour or so. And then he always gets out in the afternoon and walks again. So walking is really important for your horse's health and longevity. That's part of the basics, doing more walk work. So that helps you with your suppleness. And then connection. So connection is not only about contact and how the horse feels in your hand, but it's about, you know, the acceptance of the aids and getting your horse more responsive to a lighter aid. Because... That's one thing that I really want to work on for my next show season is, you know, you can go in there in the show and make it happen and kind of force it to happen. But I don't want to be sloppy. I want to have harmony and light aids. And that's one of my big goals that I'm working on this winter, getting ready for next show season is working on the basics so that my movements will improve. That's the way, if you want to move up the levels, if you want your half passes or your flying changes or your haunches in to get better, you have to go back and work on the basics. So hopefully that helps you guys. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, I know some of you guys, let me know in the chat if you're in the 30 Days to Round Challenge or not. It's going amazingly well. I know some of you guys might not be in the 30 Days to Round Challenge, but it's really an amazingly special group. And like, I love, you know, I put out so much free content and my mission is really that I want to help as many people as possible, make dressage accessible and affordable. Like I'm on such a mission with this because I don't like how elitist 
and exclusive dressage is. I believe that everyone should have access to it. Everyone should feel like they can be successful and supported and that we really have a positive environment. Uh, inside the 30 Days Round Challenge, though, it's been really, really fun to have a group of students that are all kind of working towards the same thing. And obviously, everyone's at a different level. Everyone has different horses. Everyone has, you know, different struggles. But it's really cool to have everyone with kind of the same curriculum where they're asking questions and helping one another and working through the content. And I'm so proud to see everyone's progress and motivation. So kind of a funny thing that I wanted to share, which is I had a student, her name is Kim, and she rides and she signed up for some private lessons with me a ways back. And she has a bodybuilding, like a fitness online thing, and she runs all these challenges. So that was actually my inspiration to start the 30 Days to Round Challenge was her fitness and bodybuilding. And so I actually joined one of her fitness challenges because I wanted to see what it was like. And one thing that I noticed and that I really liked about it is that when you have a group of people, like we're social creatures. And so when you have a group of people that are all excited and working hard on themselves or on their horses, but you're able to collaborate together with that, it really, really helps you to stay motivated through the ups and through the downs. And so that's been really, really fun to see all of you guys helping one another, getting motivated, working with your horses. And I'm really excited to be a part of that and a part of your journey because it's, yeah, it's fun to stay motivated. Okay, another thing on my list, I have my list here, is let me know in the chat if you're here. Let's see, I see, hi Dottie and Mara. Do you work with a trainer or do you work alone? Because I think that I had someone in the challenge and they were talking about how their trainer tells them never to bend their wrist, like always to keep their wrist straight. And I said in the challenge that, you know, when you supple your horse, you want to bend your wrist a little because, you know, in order to supple your horse, you start with your fingers, then you do your wrist, and then you do your elbow. So let's see. Um, some of you guys have trainers. Some Catherine works alone. Beth has a wonderful trainer. Um, yeah, so there's kind of a mix of you guys. And... Lucy has no trainer anymore, occasional trainer. But it's important, you know, there's always this kind of fine line of when you're in a lesson with the trainer, it's really important that you try your best to listen and be respectful of what they say. And I always, you know, when I go and work with a trainer, I really try to just shut up and listen to what they say and not, you know, question everything they're saying. But that said, it's always good to ask for clarification on something. So for example, if your trainer tells you, you know, not to bend your wrist, then my guess would be that, that the reason that your trainer is telling you to keep your wrist straight is you might be all the time like cocking your wrist this way or over bending your wrist the other way, which either one of these things is going to cause an interruption in the connection with your horse. So I think it's great that all of you guys are here online and you're learning and you're studying and you're getting a different opinion, even if you have a trainer. And that's really, really good. But that said, every horse is a little bit different. And so, you know, Something that you hear me say on a video might not necessarily apply in that moment to your horse. And so that's where it's important to know that part of what's hard about dressage is I can't give you an exact recipe. Like I can't tell you, okay, put like one pound of inside leg followed by a squeeze on your outside rein 
followed by two pounds of outside leg and you'll get the canter transition. You have to kind of test out the aids and put a little aid on and see how your horse reacts and adapt based on that. And same thing, you know, for example, whether you should have your horses pull more up or whether you should make them lower or rounder, it depends. And it might change depending on if your horse is hot or if your horse is lazy or if your horse is excited. And so that's that's one thing that's great if you have a trainer there that can help you is that they might be able to give you a little bit more specific feedback about what you need. Um, but it is it can be difficult because sometimes you might get conflicting advice. And at the end of the day, I think that you have to try to learn as much as you can from everyone. Like I've ridden with a lot of trainers and a lot of clinicians, and I kind of pick and choose a little what I want. Okay, from this person that worked, I really liked this from that trainer, this trainer explained this really well, and then just put it all together into what works for me and for my horse. And it might be different based on different horses. So it's good to be open minded. It's good to ask questions about, you know, hey, like, why do you want my horse to be rounder? Why do you why do you want to pull up the highest point? And also to explain like, okay, like sometimes I'll stop and, and say, here's what I'm feeling. What can I do about that? Because sometimes the trainer, like if your horse is really stiff, the trainer maybe can't um, see that. And so you might need to say like, hey, you know, my horse is really strong in the right rein. What should I do to address that? So anyways, that's just my spiel. Okay, let me see. I have a few questions here from our Patreon members. And we also have a few members on Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's kind of like a behind the scenes like tip jar. So you can leave like $1, $5. And then I post some more behind the scenes footage of me training or me at the horse show. So our new supporters this week are Nancy, Nazilla, and Sarah. This is a good question from Mara. And I think Mara is here tonight. She says, what if any has been the biggest change in your training philosophy or approach over time? This is like a really interesting question. And I would say that my biggest change is believing that training actually works and that training is possible. And I know that this sounds a little bit weird, but when I started out riding, I was the one that was always riding like the young horses that were just green broke or the problem horses or, you know, the horses that hadn't been ridden or were rehabbing. So basically, I always had to ride the horses that no one else could ride or no one else wanted to ride. And when I moved out to California, I was at this big fancy dressage barn and there were all these upper level trained FEI horses. And I remember being so envious that like the other girls at my barn, they could just get on their horses. They didn't have to do groundwork. They could just go on a loose rein. And I always had all these crazy horses where I had to do all this groundwork. I was always scared half to death that I was going to fall off because the horses weren't trained and they were unpredictable. And I just kind of thought that that's how it was. But once I got to ride horses that had been consistently trained in dressage, like year after year after year of consistent training, I saw that training your horse consistently makes transforms them. It seriously can transform their body, their attitude, um, how safe they are, how relaxed they are, and you can develop a partnership with your horse. And that's something that I didn't maybe really believe or had never experienced. And there's actually a funny story, which is when I first came to California, my trainer at the time, Sue Martin, she's a great rider and wonderful trainer. She had this horse named Lavaro. And I rode Lavaro 
around. And I, I mean, he was a fine horse. We walked track canter. Like he was an ex jumper. I didn't really, you know, whatever. He was a nice horse. Then I went back to Colorado because I needed to finish college. And I came back a year later and I rode Lavaro again. And he was literally a different horse. Like he was doing this big fancy trot and he had all this suspension in his trot and he'd learned his pirouettes and his tempi changes. And I was blown away that in a year, Sue had worked her butt off and transformed that horse. Like he didn't even feel like the same horse. He didn't look like the same horse. And I think that was when I really fell in love with dressage and with the training of the horses. And yes, it's hard. And yes, it takes forever. And you have to be so consistent and so patient. But it's amazing that if you think about it, it's amazing that we can teach horses to pee off and passage and do one tempi changes and do pirouettes. And the fun part is the partnership that you develop with that horse through the training. So I would also say that over the years, I've gotten a bit wiser and more patient with horses. But I think that's something that comes with, you know, the more you ride, the better you get. So, okay. What other questions? So here's a few questions from Instagram. Can you go into more detail on how to half halt, especially in the canner? I'm riding a hot young horse that's super sensitive and can get stressed out by rain aids. Another question, do you half halt with both hands? Do you close your hands in the half halt? Okay, so we posted a reel on Instagram and I think we posted on Facebook too this week about half halting in the canter. And in the canter, you always wanna half halt when the mane flies up because that's when the front legs are off the ground. That's the upbeat of the canter stride. So since part of half halting is rebalancing your horse and gathering the energy, it's important that you always half halt on the upbeat. In general, in the canter, you half halt a little bit more on your outside rein, although sometimes you can do it with both your reins. It just depends on the situation. But in general, the canter, because you have a left lead and a right lead, it's considered an asymmetrical gait. And you want to half halt mostly with your outside rein so that you're putting more weight on the outside hind leg. Um, that's just kind of the mechanics of the canter is that you're usually half halting more with the outside rein. So hopefully that helps. Um, you follow me on Instagram if you don't yet. It's at Amelia Newcomb Dressage. I always post reels and like behind the scenes silly stuff about my dogs and my horses so hopefully that helps you also if you guys are in strides we're next month's topic is half halts and impulsion so i have a lot of really great content that will be released on october 1st which is saturday already i can't believe it's already october it's fall it's just crazy how fast this summer has gone, but I kind of enjoy the the fall. It's really pretty here, although the days are getting much shorter. Okay, here's another question. Do you have any advice on how to get away from a driving seat? I always seem to be in a driving seat. Okay, so that's a good question. Your seat is not a driving aid, so you should not get your horse going forward by using your seat ever because it really looks terrible and uh, like you don't want to be shoving with your hips and it will actually make your horse slow down the main function of your seat is to follow the motion of your horse so you don't want to sit up there like a stiff board but you also don't want to be getting your horse going forward with your seat so it's always leg your leg is the driving aid so if you apply your leg, your horse should go forward. The instant that your horse goes forward, then your seat should follow that motion. And that's really important that, that you do it that way. And if you feel like you're always driving with your seat, then it's probably because your horse isn't responsive enough to the leg aid. So I think, yeah, if you, um, 
If you feel like you're driving with your seat, you need to use more leg. Okay, next question is, um, what about half halts in the trot? Most people say that we do it when we do rising trot at the moment we sit, but I noticed that my horse reacts better if I do it in the moment of rising from the saddle. Okay, so that's an interesting question and about half halts in the trot. I would say that sometimes in the trot, when you half halt coming out of the saddle, that actually could help to get your horse like a little more lifting up. Um, so yeah, I think in the posting trot, half halting sometimes on the upbeat could work. But if your horse is pulling you forward, then you want to maybe try to half halt when you're sitting. It's important to remember about half halts. It's like, I need to do another half halt video. But half halts are really about gathering the energy and rebalancing your horse. It's really a terrible name because half halts don't have to do with halting. So if you're in rising trot and you're half halting, you want to think about getting the energy more on the hind end. Okay, next question is from Sophie. What do I do if my horse never stays on the bit when I trot or canter, but I can do it at the walk? <laughs> okay, so this is kind of a common thing where, you know, you can get your horse round at the walk, but when you pick up the trot or the canter, they put their head up. A couple of things that I would recommend is starting some bending lines, like going on a circle or a serpentine line where you start thinking about getting bend in your horse's body. So from the tail to the pull, getting your horse to bend. Then when your horse is round and you ask for the trot, keep them with a little bend in their body and that will help to keep them round. If you are walking and your horse is round and you pick up the trot and your horse comes above the bit, try to stay in the trot and get them round. If you can't get them round in the trot, then go back to the walk, get them round, and then try it again. Eventually, your horse will put two and two together, but I would definitely recommend doing it on some circle lines. Okay. Um, let's see. What was my most memorable moment? I don't know. That's a hard one. I have a lot of memorable moments. I think you all, you know, when you ride, there's like certain feelings or certain moments that you have with your horse that are that are really memorable. I always I always feel like the moments that I remember the most or that I try to remember because I think that's really important when you're visualizing is try to remember the moments where you feel really connected to your horse. Those moments where you and your horse are just one and you know maybe you have three strides of really nice canter or a really good transition, those are the moments that you want to remember. And those are the moments that you want to play over and over and over again in your head. And those feelings are what you want to remember. It's important that you don't try to, um, you don't want to focus on the bad moments, which is what happens a lot to people is, you know, like the moments where your horse spooks or where you fall off or your horse does a big buck. Those are the moments that are memorable, but you want to try to kind of block those out of your head because you don't want to rehearse the bad moments over and over again or your brain will be fixated on that. So try to focus on the really good moments and rehearse that and make those memorable. Okay, Laura, I'm gonna answer your question because I saw you're here. How do you get and keep a square halt? My mare stops square and then always moves her left hind back. So we go from an eight to a 6.5 in the ring. Okay, so if you go to the halt and your horse backs up, you need to get a lot quicker about feeling like right as your horse starts to back away to put your leg on. And that's a hard thing to do, but even though you're halting, 
your horse needs to have forward energy in the halt, which sounds really weird because you're standing still and you're like, how, um, how could I have impulsion at the halt? But basically in the halt, you want your horse like kind of crouching down on their hind end so that they're ready to like spring forward and go to the trot. So I think when you go into the halt, if you know that your horse has a tendency to back up, make sure that you are forward thinking into the halt, that you don't pull your horse backwards, but that you really send your horse forward into the halt. And then the instant that you feel your horse like start to back away, put your leg on and send them forward. And that's something that you're just going to have to be really good at fixing before it even happens. So hopefully that um, that helps. Okay, so Joellen, she's here in the chat, but she texted me one thing I need to talk about. Need to talk about the slump. <laughs> okay, so someone in 30 Days to Round says, our trot had some round moments. Um, diligence, patience, practice is paying off for us. I hope this post inspires other, um, to keep working. So, yeah, I think that it's, you know, discouragement and disappointment and frustration is a part of riding. It's a part of dressage. I feel it, you know, um, it was funny earlier this week. My husband has been helping me because my coach is still in Germany and I've been like frustrated with myself and my riding and feeling like I don't ride well enough. And so he was helping me and he said, your horse looks a lot better. He's looking really good. Are you happy with how he's looking? And I was, <laughs> it was really nice of him to say that, but I was like, I was like, yeah, thanks for saying that. You know, I've been frustrated with my riding and frustrated with myself lately. So what can we do when we're frustrated, when we're discouraged? I think a couple of things. Um, one of the best things to do is to get a lesson or take a video or get some support because I think we're all very type A. We're all very hard on ourselves. And sometimes the day-to-day -day improvement is so small that you don't recognize it. And so because you're learning more and your standard is getting higher and higher, sometimes you don't sit back and reflect on, you know, a month ago and then be able to see, wow, like I've made a lot of progress. And so I think that's important is, you know, get some video or have a pair of eyes that can watch you and kind of let you know, okay, you know, your horse does look better. So don't be so hard on yourself. I think that that's that's really important that if there's some way that you can measure it via video or having an instructor that can be really helpful um the other thing that i think is important when you're discouraged or disappointed is to do something different so give your horse a few days off they're not going to forget everything that they've learned um sometimes horses need a few days off just to let their bodies relax. And you do too, you know, just take a few days off, let your horse chill out, let them relax, take them for a walk or change up your routine a little bit. Like at our barn, we have five different arenas. We have a big jump ring. So I've been taking my horses a lot and riding them in the jump ring, taking them over Cavalettis, um, just trying to change it up so that you're not just making riding unpleasant because riding is fun. Like you have to remember that you do this for fun and for pleasure and for enjoyment. So if you're losing that, then um, that's not a good thing. But the other thing that's important to know is that there's kind of this cycle of learning. I'm not sure if I can recite all the steps, but basically what happens at the beginning is it's like ignorance is bliss and you don't know what you don't know. So you're just riding around and you think like, oh, life is so good. My horse looks so good. Everything's going great. And then, you know, maybe you watch one of my videos or you join the 30 days to round challenge and I give you all this information, which is great. 
But then you go through this phase where you realize like you have a lot to work on and your horse really isn't on the aids and they're not really through and they're not really connected. So you go from this place of ignorance to now this place of discouragement because you've realized what you don't know. You've realized these holes in your training and these problems. And so that's that's where the frustration comes in. And sometimes when my students get frustrated, I say, well, that's a good thing because that means you're about to have a breakthrough. Like you're about to get it better and see an improvement in your horse. So you have to kind of know that, that in order to get better, you have to get a little worse And then you have to just stay consistent and like dig your way out of that hole and just keep trying. And the other thing that really helps me when I start getting a little discouraged or frustrated is really thinking about being mindful about my riding. And what I mean about being mindful is trying to take a moment and analyze what's happening and why it's happening instead of just going around and around and around and like drilling on your horse and being frustrated if you have a bad transition or if something doesn't go right take a moment to walk and try and replay that transition or whatever in your head and analyze like what did you do what did your body do what did your horse do why did that happen how can you do it differently the next time? So mindfulness is something that is important to bring into all of your life. And basically what mindfulness means is it's kind of like being able to remove yourself and like be, you know, like up in the clouds looking down on your ride. So rather than all your frustration there in the saddle is take yourself out of it and be able to look from an outside perspective and say, what happened and why did it happen? And that's the same thing in life. You you know, I think about when you're in kind of an argument with someone or a disagreement or when you're super stressed out is trying to remove yourself from that situation and analyze it kind of from an external thing. So hopefully that helps you guys. All right. Um, I think that's it for tonight. Levi's tired. Levi, say hi. Say hi. He's so cute. He's so funny. I love how he's in like all of my videos. He's the best dog ever. But anyways, I hope you guys all have a wonderful evening. I will be here next Thursday. If you're in uh, 30 days to round, I'll be live on Sunday. Nicole will be live tomorrow. Nicole works for me. She's a judge. She's amazing. So if you're in 30 days to round, Nicole will be there on Sunday or no, she'll be there on Friday. I'll be there on Sunday. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful evening. It's so fun. I'm so proud of all you guys and your progress and your learning. And it's so special. So thank you all.